Hi, my name's Kim Arnold. Welcome to my latest scrapbooking process video using the new Vicky Booten Colour Study range. And I'm doing this process video for my local scrapbooking store in Bellishet, which is in Timaru, New Zealand and online. Um, this layout is based on a Vicky Booten's foundation paper, which is the heavy white smooth cardstock. Um, and I am going to create a mixed media background once I set up the top section of this layout. So the mixed media will be on the bottom section. I'm using this beautiful bright colored paper along with the reverse side of it, which is a black with a subtle pattern in it. Um, so the layout will have the band of color across the top and then mixed media will come down from that. Um, so I'm fiddling around at the moment. I am going to mount my photos on tissue paper and then I am going to mount them on the black pattern paper, the same as what's under um, the, the bright colored pattern paper. Um, I, after cutting out the black pattern paper and distressing the edges, I don't actually end up using it behind the photos, um, but I'm just preparing that at the moment. So I'm going to create a rainbow type um, mixed media section on this layout um, using Tim Holtz Distress Oxides. I end up using a teal, a purple, a pink and an orange across the page, creating um, dribbles down the page. I do this um, by using um, some plastic to mix the oxide inks with some water. And then I spray the water onto the foundations paper to help the ink move more. Um, so you want it quite wet so that the um, oxide inks do move around. Um, and you'll see that I put it on with a brush and then I um, lift the paper and tap it to move and get the um, dribbles down the page. Um, and then I also flick with um, quite wet oxide ink to create um, splashes on the page as well. So just um, work across the page, one color after the other. I ended up um, coming back and reworking over the other colors to even up the amount um, of, of each of the colors that I have showing on the page. Um, the oxide ink works quite well to, to move over the colors. I didn't make any mud, which is good. Um, you can add more water as you go and more color to get more dribbles. Um, I do recommend not putting your splatter effect on until you've got all your dribbles and everything. Otherwise, you can cause your splatters um, to run a bit, which happened to me. Um, so that's what I'm talking from experience. Um, but you can create really lovely effect by doing this with oxide inks.
So I'm just attaching that band of the black pattern paper at the top. Of course, you don't need to run the, the black pattern paper all the way under that bright colored pattern paper. There's no um, benefit to doing that. Um, you wanna save as much paper as you can because it's very, very pretty. So I'm now gonna fussy cut out some flowers from the floral paper that's in the range. Um, so I'm cutting out a large cluster which will appear on the left side of the photos and then a single flower which will appear on the right side of the photos. And I'll just um, quickly cut those out. Um, to save time, I'll cut a bit, cut a bit from the video because um, I don't think you really need to see me fussy cut flowers. Um, so those flowers work really well. Um, I then faff around a bit with these photos, trying to get them in the right place um, and make sure that my composition is working well. Um, now I'm going to use a stencil and some green distress ink. Um, when you look at the floral pattern paper, it has like green um, circles printed behind the flower pattern and it has little black crosses so i'm going to replicate that over the rainbow pattern so i randomly put using a circle stencil and some green distress ink i have put it onto over the top of the rainbow that i created i'm now going to stick all of the elements down and then i will come back and put some of those little black crosses down so if you look at that floral paper you'll see the green dots and you'll see the black crosses and i've used that as my inspiration for the work that i do um, around the photos and embellishments Um, you can see here that, I, as I said, I didn't end up using the black that I had cut to go behind the photos. When I actually ended up sticking it down over the rainbows, I just didn't think it needed that extra black border. And I liked just the bit of tissue paper um, around the photos. So I mounted those up with foam tape. I'm sticking down the flowers using a combination of wet glue closer to um, the photos through to one and two layers of foam tape as the flower cluster moves further away from the photos. Um, so as I said, large flower cluster on the left, single flower with the leaf on the right. Um, and again, I also use a combination of wet glue and foam tape to stick down that single flower as well. I'm now going to stick down my embellishments. So I have a word phrase sticker um, from the 6x12 sticker sheet, um, which I'm using. And then I am going to use a little budgie that's um, also from that 6x12 sticker sheet. But I am going to actually fussy cut around that to remove um, some of the white border, um, which I did, um, which I'm going to do, I think. Um, and I mount that with foam tape. So just fussy cutting around that budgie means that it's just not as bulky um, and it works better with the background than if it has the large white border around it. So as I said, foam tape and stick it above that phrase sticker. Um, I'm then going to use the pencil with another phrase on it um, next to the original phrase sticker. So I'm putting some foam tape on that. Um, it will also sit underneath um, the photo. Thank you. 
So I decided I needed another flower just at the bottom. So I fussy cut another half flower off the edge of the paper. I'm just going to tuck that under the bottom edge of the photo with a leaf. Um, and I think that that just finishes the flowers off well. Then decided that the photos needed a bit of a pop. So I'm actually going to use the branding um, strip from the top of the papers that come in the 12 by 12 paper pad. So I can use that bit of branding um, strip rather than cutting into a full sheet of 12 by 12 paper. So that's a, the hot pink um, paper. Um, and I'm putting that a little strip of that at the top and the bottom of the photo cluster. And then I decided it needed um, a little bit more there. So I actually end up adding in a um, black and white uh, strip from a branding strip as well. So it, the, all the papers that I'm using are in the 12 by 12 paper pack. Um, and so I've taken that strip and you can see I'm adding that in now with the black and white striped paper and then the other side of it's got a bit of orange on it as well but that works fine and I tuck that in under the bottom making sure that the flower sits in the right place so the flower is actually overlapping that, that second strip. Um, then I'm adding another flower sticker um, which is one of the daisies that, that looks like one of the flowers off the pattern paper but next to the pink flower that's actually a sticker. Um, and now I am trying to decide where to put my title, which is a large black and white title. And it works really well with that black and white um, strip of paper that I put in. So I did try the stickers, the puffy stickers from the a title from those, but decided that the Be Colourful black and white sticker worked really well. And that's also from the 6x12 sticker sheet. And I'm going to put that over that large flower cluster towards the bottom left of the photos. I'm just pointing out here that there's crosses on the background of that um, floral paper and now I'm just drawing those in here um, and getting close to the end of this layout. What I did do after I went off camera is added a whole heap of splashes of white acrylic paint which you can see here in these close-up photos and gold mist just to finish things off. And as I said, you can see those in these close-up shots of the layout that I'm showing you now. So again, this layout's using the new Vicky Booten Colour Study, which will be available online and in-store at Embellish It Timaru shortly. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you can join me again soon.